Over the past few months, I've been playing a lot of the Bandai Wonderswan, and in this video, I've picked out 20 of my favorite games that you can play with no language barrier. So let's get started with game number 20, which is Buffer's Evolution. This is kind of a speed running platformer, which on its own is a very unique and original concept. And I love how they've executed it here on the Wonderswan. It's a black and white game. Basically, it starts with you picking one of three different robots in order to finish the levels. And then you literally just have to run as fast as possible from the start to the finish. There's loads of different power-ups that you can get along the way. There's some really nice different course layouts. The designs for the courses are great and it's a real joy to control as well. It is so fast and it's so fun. And it's also a very unique game for the system as well. So if you like platformers and you want something very different, very challenging and a little bit strange, then definitely check out Buffer's Evolution. Now next is a game that was made using the Wonder Witch, which was basically the Wonder Swan's answer to homebrew developers. And two very lucky developers actually got their games published physically. And this is one of the final games ever released for the system. And also one of the most expensive these days. This is Judgment Silver Sword. And this is an incredible vertical scrolling shooter. It takes full advantage of the Wonder Swan's ability to play in portrait mode as well as horizontal. And the game is just absolutely incredible. It really feels like that kind of fan game that you would experience that only Japan could create in the early 2000s. Things like Cho Rensha on the X68000, it really gives me that kind of vibe and it plays incredibly well on the Wonder Swan. There's thousands of sprites flying around the screen, the controls are absolutely perfect. And there's so many different options in the game, you can make it as easy or as challenging as you want. And it is a fantastic shoot em up. I had a great time playing through this, and I will be very sad when I have to give this copy back soon. I did see, though, that this game and its sequel is actually coming out on the Switch very soon, so hopefully I can get my hands on a copy of that, and maybe I'll do a full video review on the updated version of Judgment Silver Sword that's coming out at some point later this year, I think. Now, next is a game that I downloaded for the flashcard, and this one is called Ganso Jajumaru Kun. I love some of these simple arcade style platformers where you have a single screen and a bunch of enemies to kill and this game is just so much fun to play and it's executed really well on the Wonder Swan too. I know there's a few other versions of this game out there. I think once again it also has a Switch port as well so if you like what you're seeing on the screen right now then there's definitely multiple ways to play Jajumaru Kun today but the Wonder Swan version doesn't have a language barrier and it plays really well so if you want that sort of action platforming experience for the system then that is probably the best game that you'll find. Now next is a game called Gunpei obviously named after the creator of the Wonder Swan. And if you want to find out his story, then check out my Wonder Swan history video that I made a while back. After you've finished watching this, I'll put a link down in the comments below and down in the description. The game itself is called Gunpei, and there's actually three different versions. This is the original black and white version. There was also a color version that was released alongside the Wonder Swan color a few years later. And there was also a third version of the game as well, which has these really cute panda graphics. No matter what version of the game you play, you're guaranteed to have a great time with a really fun and unique puzzle game where you basically have to move lines up, up and down the screen in order to create a line from one side of the screen to the other. It starts off really simple, but of course, like all good puzzle games, it gets more and more difficult the more you play. There's endless replay value here, and of course, the gunplay games did get a few sequels in the future on things like the DS and the PSP, but if you want to see where the series got its start, then definitely check out the Wonder Swan game. Although the series actually got its start, I've actually got it here, in an LCD format a few years earlier, in 1997 I believe, and this is something that I'll be covering in a future video along with the other game here, and these are actually two of the final games that Gunpei Yokoi ever released. So I can't wait to do my video on that. But for now, back to the Wonder Swan and to the next game. And the next game here is Klonoa Moonlight Museum. And I'm sure a lot of you watching are big fans of the Klonoa series, like I am. And this is actually the first game that I ever played on the Wonder Swan, because this Wonder Swan right here, I picked up on my first trip to Japan back in 2014. And I picked this game up to go along with it. And I actually played all the way through the game on the way back home on the aeroplane on a really nice 11 hour flight, I think it was. I played through the entire of Klonoa Moonlight Museum and I had a great time doing so. At that point, I was already a huge fan of the series, so I was very excited to check out this more elusive entry in the series. And I have to say, it is one of the best, honestly. It is a really fun platformer with some great puzzle mechanics. <laughs> 
Now next is a game called Magical Drop, and this one is of course available on loads of different consoles, and in the arcades as well, but this is the Wonderswan version. It's only a black and white game, which is kind of unfortunate because I love the colourful different magical symbols in this game when I was playing it on the Saturn a few years ago, but the Wonderswan game plays really well. It's another game that plays in vertical mode, or tate mode I guess you could say, and it's just a joy to play on the Wonderswan, it's so fast, it's so responsive, and of course it's an arcade classic, so if you've ever played it before you know exactly what to expect with this one. It does have some cutscenes in between, but obviously they're all in Japanese, but you don't need to know the cutscenes in order to enjoy the game itself. So I highly recommend Magical Drop for the Wonder Swan, it's a great arcade conversion. Now next is another game that I played on the flashcard, and this is Makai Mura, obviously also known as Ghouls and Ghosts I think, and this game is another great arcade conversion. I am absolutely terrible at these games, so I really didn't get far at all, but from what I played, it seems like a really faithful port of the arcade and console game onto the Wonderswan, and it's great to play this kind of platformer on the system, it seems like it can handle it no problem, so if you enjoy a challenge and you want a great platformer then definitely check out Makai Mura. Now next is a game called Mingle Magnet, and I would actually really like to own this one physically because this is probably one of the most interesting games for the system, because this game is actually made by HAL Laboratories of Nintendo fame, so it was really cool to see a game that they'd made on the Wonderswan, and it's actually a really fun puzzle game as well, which obviously doesn't have any sort of language barrier. It's a very simple game, basically each side of the screen has a magnet on, and you can shift all of the blocks inside the screen, up, down, left, or right, in order to try and make a match to make them disappear, and all the while there's other new blocks coming in from all angles as well. It's a very simple concept, but that is what makes a great puzzle game, so I really enjoyed playing Mingle Magnet, and I would love to try and get my hands on a physical version just for that HAL Labs logo at the bottom. I think it's so fascinating that they made a game for the Wonderswan. Now next is a game that I got cart only, and this is basically Picross for the Wonderswan. It's a great version of Picross as well, there is a lot of polish in this game. I love the really cute graphics. It is only in black and white, so you don't get any colour, but for people that are coming off something like Mario's Picross, then this is definitely another great game to play in that series. Of course, it's full of brand new puzzles, and it looks really nice on the Wonderswan screen as well. Because it's widescreen, you can actually fit slightly bigger puzzles in the same play area, so it's a really great port of Picross, and of course, again, no language barrier. It's really easy to pick up and play, and I was having a blast playing this on the Wonderswan. Now, for another game that I picked up in Japan when I first got my system, this is Mr. Driller, and this was a really impressive game for the system. Obviously, Mr. Driller isn't the most difficult game to program, but this was the first game that I played that actually made me think that the Wonderswan console isn't really a million miles away from the Game Boy Advance, and it can hold its own. The colour in this game in particular looks absolutely fantastic on the Swan Crystal or the Swan Colour, but the Crystal especially with its really nice screen just plays fantastically on here. It's so fast, it's so fun. Of course, if you played Mr. Driller before you know exactly what to expect, but it's a great arcade game and once again another fantastic conversion for the system. Now next is Tetris, and I know what you're thinking, yeah Tetris is kind of boring, but I have to say that the Wonder Swan version of Tetris is honestly the best version of Tetris that I've played on a handheld, and I'm not saying that lightly. I love the Game Boy version, I love the DS version, and I even love the GBA homebrew game Apostris as well, but honestly, the Wonderswan version completely blew me away. This was way better than it has any right to be. And I think this was actually one of the first versions of Tetris to include all of the modern features, like the shadow block that goes across the bottom, like being able to hold pieces, the T-spin, and of course the hard drop as well. So basically this has everything that you could want from a modern version of Tetris, and the controls are so responsive, and I also love the music and sound effect in this game as well. And it plays vertically, so you get a really nice play field when you're playing through this. Absolutely loved every minute that I played of Tetris, and again, like Judgment Silver, Sword, this is one that I have to give back soon, and it will be very difficult to part with it because I honestly love both of these games so much, and I'm definitely going to try and track down my own copies at some point in the future. Now next, apart from Tetris and Judgment Silver Sword, this is probably the third most expensive game that I've got here. This one is called Sorrow Bang, and this is another puzzle game for the system, and a very interesting one too. This was made by a company called Mechanic Arms, and it seems like they knew the Wonders one really well, because this is a really well-programmed game. It's a very unique puzzle game as well, it kind of 
closely resembles Chuzzle, I guess, is the nearest approximation to this, or maybe something like Yoshi's Cookie. But instead of the screen being full of blocks, it's actually only got blocks separated out around the screen, and you can basically move the columns either horizontally or vertically to try and line up the colours. Again, just like every other good puzzle game, it's a very simple concept, but it has fantastic execution. And again, the music and sound effects are really good too. Now, there's only a few racing games on the Wonder Swan, but one that I found was really fun is called Final Lap Special. And there's two different types of game in this. You either get a rally car or you get a Formula One car, and both of them actually control surprisingly well. There was a game that came out before it called Final Lap 2000, I think, which was only in black and white, but this special version is in full colour, and it also includes the rally car too. It's really impressive to see this running on the Wonder Swan as well in particular. The sprite scaling is so smooth on this, it really makes me wish that Sega was more involved with the system. Maybe we could have had things like Outrun, or even Afterburner or Space Harrier on here, that would be so cool. Now next is a 2D fighting game, and there were actually a few of these on the system, but the one I've got here is called Pocket Fighter, and this is absolutely fantastic. Obviously the Game Boy had some fighting games and this game doesn't quite live up to some of the fighting games on the Neo Geo Pocket or the Pocket Color, but for what is here on the Wonder Swan, this is a fantastic all-round fighting game. The controls are super responsive, the sprites are really nice and big, and it's just really fun to play. And there's also a Guilty Gear game for the Wonder Swan as well, so if you are into fighting games there's definitely a few to choose from, but my recommendation would be Pocket Fighter. And the next game here is called Run dim and this one really took me by surprise. I was expecting a Japanese RPG like a lot of the games on the system are but this one actually turned out to be a horizontal scrolling shooter. Now it's not really that good in terms of horizontal scrolling shooters but it is as far as I'm aware the only example of the genre on the system so I had to include it in this list and I did have quite a lot of fun with it. The graphics especially are really nice. The hitboxes are a little bit too big for my liking and it is kind of slow to control but once you get past those two things it is a really fun side-scrolling shooter with some really nice graphics and it does have a few cutscenes here and there but you can just kind of ignore them and enjoy the gameplay. So the games that I showed up until this point are obviously all Japanese games that you don't really need to know Japanese to enjoy but the next five games in the list are actually five games that have English translation patches so let's get into those now starting with the first one which is the first two Final Fantasy games and these are really fantastic ports to the Wonder Swan. They basically resemble the GBA games and I actually got this really nice set here for Final Fantasy 2. I picked this up at one of the gaming markets last year I think and it's a really nice collection and the great thing is that both of these games have got fan translations so if you do get yourself something like the Flash Master card that I've got here then you can download the IPS patch and patch the ROM and enjoy these games in English and of course the Final Fantasy games are fantastic. There is Final Fantasy 4 on here as well but that one isn't in English unfortunately. Another Final Fantasy game that is in English though, thanks to a fan translation, is Chocobo's Dungeon, and I really enjoyed playing this. I love the Mystery Dungeon games, and I love the roguelike dungeon crawlers, so to play one with Chocobos on the Wonder Swan is just fantastic. The story is really nice, and it was translated really well too, and of course the gameplay is just great if you enjoy those sort of dungeon crawling, turn-based style battles where you pick up items and you return to a town, and you get to experience the town and see how it changes over time and stuff. It's a really Really great game so if you enjoy that definitely check out Chocobo's Dungeon for the Wonder Swan. Next is a game that I also picked up when I first got my system. This is Rockman and Forte, or Mega Man and Bass as it's more widely known. And this is an incredible Mega Man game that's stuck on the Wonder Swan. So it's great that people can experience this game now, thanks to ROMs and emulators and stuff like that. I definitely recommend giving it a try. In fact, I actually did a whole video review of this game a few years ago. So if you are interested in one of the most obscure Mega Man games there are, then definitely check out my video of it to see what it's all about, because I I really did enjoy it. It honestly holds its own with the Game Boy Mega Man games of the time. And there is also a fan translation patch as well, so if you want to enjoy the cutscenes and the surprisingly enjoyable story in this, then definitely check it out. I'll put links in the description to all of the translation patches that I used. Now next is Digimon, and while this isn't exactly the Digimon game that I'm showing, this is the only one that I actually own, so the really interesting thing about that Digimon game is the fact that it was released in South Korea with English language support. So I downloaded that copy of the game and it seems like it's a fantastic game as well. I didn't put that much time into it but from what I played the story moves at a really fast pace and the cutscenes look incredible on the system. 
they honestly look like an anime come to life. The gameplay though is a little bit strange. So you have the basic wandering around the town and talking to everyone, but the battles are kind of a mix of turn-based strategy mixed with kind of automated battles. You don't really get to pick any choices, as far as I could tell anyway. But it does seem like a really interesting game, and the Wonder Swan was just full of Digimon games. So if you enjoy Digimon, obviously Bandai made the Wonder Swan and they sort of licensed Digimon as well, so there is a wealth of Digimon goodness on the system. But definitely check out Digimon Anode and Cathode Tamer if you want an English Digimon game for the system. And saving the best till last, this game is absolutely incredible. This is another one of the Wonder Witch games, which was one of the homebrew games that got an official release. Unfortunately, I don't own it physically, but I would love to try and track it down one day, and that game is called Dicing Knight. And this game honestly feels so modern and so fresh, I had an absolute blast playing it. I don't really know how to describe this, it's kind of an action-based dungeon crawler with a really interesting mechanic where you can store four different items at once and you can use them at different times and you also roll dice every time you attack as well and that kind of depends on what happens in the game. It has that incredible early 2000s Japanese fan game aesthetic that I absolutely love and I would love to try and track down a copy for myself and I would love to also know what else the developer has made because I think they were super talented to make this on the Wonder one. Just the amount of physics that are going on and the amazing graphics and music. It just all comes together to be one incredible game and I highly recommend it for anyone looking for something different. Whether you want a game for the Wonder Swan or whether you just want a new game to play in general. So if you enjoyed this video on the Wonder Swan and you want to know even more about it then click the video up here and watch my documentary on the history and development of the system. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all again very soon. Goodbye.